What's up, you beautiful bastards? Hope you've had a fantastic Wednesday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing I want to talk about today, one of the most requested stories, I had not heard about this before. A Scottish YouTuber by the name of Marcus Meachin is facing up to one year in prison for a video he put out last year. He put out the video, he was arrested, he was charged with a hate crime, and of course now the question is, well, what was in the video? Well, it was for this. He has his girlfriend's pug right in front of him. He says his girlfriend's always ranting and raving about how cute her dog is, so I thought I would turn it into the least cute thing you could think of, which is a Nazi. He then proceeds to say this a bunch. Dry glass of juice. It took me hearing that four times to understand what he was saying. I was like, glass of juice? Dry glass of juice. Dry glass of juice. Gas the Jews. Oh. He then also films himself showing the dog Nazi propaganda, then also showing the dog doing the Nazi salute. See Kyle. <laughs> now in response to this video, the Scottish Council of Jewish Communities said, it is a form of racism which needs to be condemned just as we would any other form of racism. Just as we would condemn Islamophobia or anti-African racism. The director of the council adding, to regard the meticulously planned and industrialized murder of six million people solely on the grounds of their ethnicity as a joke is outrageous. And for someone who does so to claim not to be racist, beggars believe. Now, after all of this, Meechin put out a video apologizing, but the reason we're talking about it today is this goes to court on the 22nd. Meechin put out a new video, once again expressing what the video was supposed to be about in his eyes. It sounds very much like he does believe that he is going to serve some time, and it appeared one of the biggest things to him in this video is getting it out that he was not an anti-Semite, and in no way does he support Nazis. And a lot of the people that are turning up at this trial are trying to say that I was trying to be an anti-Semite, I'm trying to encourage anti-Semitism, I'm trying to normalize Nazism, and all that other stuff. When none of that at all is true. Despite the fact that I have openly and publicly slammed Nazi ideology, Nazis themselves, and even totally had a, a great, great time arguing with those fucking retarded Holocaust deniers on Twitter, I'm still being accused of being an anti-Semite. The way I feel about Nazism and anti-Semitism is abundantly clear. I hate it. I don't like it. It has no place in modern society. It needs to fuck off. And so for this story in particular, I don't want to throw my opinion out there. I want this to be a big point of debate. I'll link to the video that has resulted in this charge down below. It's a less than two and a half minute video, although it can pretty much be summarized by the clips I've shown in this video. So the question I want to pass off to you is, is there a line and did we see it crossed here? And obviously people are going to draw connections between this story and the PewDiePie story that happened with the Wall Street Journal and all those other outlets a while ago. Maybe you have the same feelings, maybe you think this situation is different. I, I want to feel you out. Is it never okay to show Nazi imagery, to, to say words that they use? who joke about the Holocaust, specifically the gassing of Jewish people? Or do you think when it comes to jokes, there is no line? Or is his setup where he says this? Our girlfriend is always ranting and raving about how cute and adorable her wee dog is. And so I thought I would turn him into the least cute thing that I could think of, which is a Nazi. And even double so, if you are Jewish, I would love to know your opinion, because when it comes to situations like this, I have my experience, I have my background and my history, and you have a completely different one that might affect how this situation hits you. But from that, I want to share some stuff I love today, and today in awesome, brought to you by squarespace.com slash Phil. Squarespace, of course, is an incredibly easy place to make a beautiful website simply. These are intuitive and easy to use all-in-one platform. Nothing to install, patch or upgrade ever. So if you want to check it out, maybe start your free trial like many from the nation already have, go to squarespace.com slash Phil. And if you really like it, use coupon code Phil for 10% off your first purchase. And the first bit of awesome, I've been meaning to mention this all week. If you are a fan of Mr. Rogers or you've never experienced it and you want to look back to the olden days, the entirety of the series Mr. Rogers Neighborhood is being marathoned on Twitch. Also as a random side note, and here's my old man moment. This is so weird for me to think about, but there is a generation that as far as consuming entertainment, they never lived in a world without DVR, or without some way to make sure they watched every episode of a season or a series. If you missed the episodes for one or two weeks, you were just screwed, just fill in the blanks. And we got a new trailer for the new Transformers movie, and it looks, it just looks like what it's supposed to be. Big, stupid, loud fun. I'm gonna turn my brain off, enjoy Mark Wahlberg playing one of two characters he plays in every single movie. Loud, bright things are gonna happen for 90 minutes, and then I'll be like, oh, that was kinda cool. Then, in cautiously optimistic, awesome The Witcher is being turned into a Netflix series. Reportedly, the series will follow the original eight books, five novels, and three short stories. And the author of the book is going to work on the series as a creative consultant. So let's hope that it's good. Then we had Michelle Carr putting out one of two Why I Left BuzzFeed videos I did not hate and actually very, very much enjoyed. She took a different kind of swing at it and it's really fun. And if you want to see the full versions of everything I just shared, the secret link of the day, anything at all, links as always are in the description down below. And then let's cover one of my favorite segments, What Random Thing Are People Angry About Today? I almost gave up on the jingle right in the middle, but then I decided 
Power through it. One of the big random outrage stories today revolves around a woman by the name of Debbie D. Debbie was in the supermarket, Asda, and she saw something that she just could not let stand. This shirt that says, boys will be boys, and Debbie wrote a post that has blown up now, saying, quite literally, gobsmacked and raging to see this in Asda Huntley. This is so damaging, and we cannot possibly still be spouting this nonsense to our children. Please email Asda to complain or tweet slash Facebook message them like I have. Now, if you're new here, this is something I like to point out when we talk about these outrage stories, and that the you know, everyone has the right to be offended, but it is important to note that just because you are offended doesn't mean you are right. Other people might not see the world as you do, and as someone that puts things out into the world, I understand that I cannot control how people receive it, how they react. But their reaction is their truth, their reality, not the overall reality for everyone else. So with that said, Dabby D, Double D, D Dog, aren't there other things that you could be raging about? I mean, first thing up, how can you be offended when it's two for six? As far as clothing goes, that's a deal. I am interested. That, that shirt could say a lot of different things and I'm still intrigued. And also too, yes, the phrase boys will be boys can be what some call problematic, troublesome, downright disgusting in certain contexts. Context is key. Boys will be boys should not be used as a way to excuse a, a guy hitting on a girl or doing something really inappropriate to a girl who is obviously not interested. But in the context of, let's say, like two little eight-year-old boys, they're their friends, they're wrestling, they're like play fighting, which yes, someone could argue, well, that's kind of exclusionary. I know little girls that love to do the same thing. But then I feel like you end up playing this weird PC game where you have a shirt that says, boys will be boys, then in smaller font, but girls could also be boys if they want. I mean, I don't want to offend anyone. I mean, also gender identity can be a little bit fluid. I mean, I ju I'm just not going to sell this shirt. Now, is there a conversation that could be had around this? Yes, 100%, but I don't think uh, uh, being gobsmacked and raging is, uh, is an appropriate reaction. But your truth, your reality, my truth, my reality. And then let's talk about the big story out of Thailand that involves Thailand's king. It's being reported that Thai authorities are demanding that Facebook take down this video featuring the king of Thailand in a crop top. But apparently, Thai authorities is not a fan of this being out there. Not only demanding Facebook take the videos down, but threatening prosecution if they don't. And here's the thing, Thailand actually has a law that makes it illegal to defame, insult, or threaten the king. A clause in the Thai constitution read it. The king shall be enthroned in a position of revered worship and shall not be violated. No person shall expose the king to any sort of accusation or action. But that's it, the constitution leaves the door wide open, so there's nothing that clarifies what exactly they consider defamation or an insult. And here's the super fun part, people who break this law face up to 15 years in prison. And as far is the defense of, well, you know, sometimes they're just crazy laws. The Thai authorities are trying to just leverage this law on a corporate level to get Facebook to remove it. You know, they wouldn't actually enforce this law against an individual. Well, according to the Worldwide Movement for Human Rights, there have been 105 people arrested under this law since May 2014. And to be even one person being arrested for making fun of the king, that's ridiculous. So what I'll say is to the king of Thailand and to Thai authorities, I luckily have this thing called freedom of speech. It's this cool little thing where if I think you're being an asshole, I can call you an asshole. And if you think I'm being an asshole, you can call me an asshole. And so I don't have to worry about laws that you put into place because people might say things that hurt your feelings. But rather than just simply making fun of you with words, I want to turn this into an educational experience because you broke rule number one of the internet. You let the internet find out that you didn't want people to see something, so now everyone's gonna see it. Not only in this video right now where you've been watching and that video and pictures of you have been showing the entire time, but also in the links in the description, if you want to snag these pictures and or video, you can. Then in a choice that is entirely your own, maybe you post those on your social media with maybe the hashtag foo foo for life. And for those wondering about that hashtag, foo foo is the president's poodle who he has wear evening wear. So, yeah. And then I want to talk about what happened outside of the Turkish embassy in Washington, D.C. The president of Turkey, Erdogan, is in the United States to meet with President Trump. While here, Erdogan was reportedly in the Turkish embassy. Uh, many people came to protest this. Reportedly, this group that was protesting was mainly Kurdish. Then we also saw supporters of Erdogan show up, and then all hell breaks loose. But here's the thing. Reportedly, this brawl didn't just take place with supporters of Erdogan and protesters. According to witnesses, the brawl erupted when Erdogan's security detail attacked protesters carrying the flag of the Kurdish PYD party outside of the residence. In the videos of this chaos, you'll see all of those guys in suits, and those are Turkish bodyguards. U.S. officials have confirmed to NBC News that they're not just Turkish bodyguards, they are Erdogan's bodyguards. And in the video, we see them kicking people while they're on the ground in the face. Others then joining in. Several supporters striking this woman while she's just on the ground in the fetal position. Boom, guy that looks like he's a bodyguard kicks her right in the face. Reportedly, nine people were injured, there were two arrests made, and if you're wondering, no, the people who were arrested were not Turkish bodyguards bodyguards. And I know there's a lot going on right now, but I don't know how this story is not a bigger deal in the United States right now. We have people from a foreign country coming here 
and beating Americans in the streets of Washington, D.C. What the actual fuck? There is video evidence of what took place. You have Americans protesting in the streets of America, a leader they find to be authoritarian, and just to be specific here, I'm talking about Erdogan. Not making some sly comment, but in America, then a Turkish bodyguard decides to assault an American and nothing happens? For a country with a current political regime of Americans first, how, how do you just let this slide? You have Erdogan's armed thugs beating Americans in the street. I just, I know that I'm repeating myself, but the, the fact that this, this fucking happened and nothing. Nothing seems to be pointing to anyone being held accountable. That it just, it looks weak. They just spit in the face of what America is supposed to be about. They brought their authoritarian bullshit to our country. And so for me personally, the only way to end this story is fuck Erdogan, fuck his bodyguards, and fuck anyone in our government that sees this and does not speak up. And that's actually where I'm gonna end today's show. And remember, if you liked this video, you like what I do on this channel, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Also, if you missed and wanna catch up on yesterday's Philip DeFranco show, you can click or tap right there to watch that. If you wanna see today's brand new behind the scenes vlog, you can click or tap right there to watch that. But with that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.